Oh, I see. Or do I do I need to? You guys can hear me, right? I'm pretty loud speaker. Okay, good. <coughs> um, right. So I'm Ben Sadegi. Um, I'm a data and AI specialist here at Microsoft. Um, so I help. Uh, I basically help customers, partners. <laughs> Um, learn about the latest tools that uh, that's available uh, from Microsoft, especially on the uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud. And uh, I do quite a bit of work within the uh, machine learning and deep learning space. So um, today, um, we'd like to give you an update on the Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit. Uh, this is an open source deep learning framework. Um, no. quick, quick round of hands. Who's familiar with the basics of deep learning? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so if I may, let's get started here. Um, we'll do a quick introduction. Um, I'll actually show you how to build a few models here, uh, some, some famous ones, if you will, VGG, ResNet, uh, uh, Inception. Uh, some, uh, we'll go through some performance, uh, performance benchmarks that just came out this month. Uh, pretty cool. I'll give you the updates and some resources. Yeah, that's um, hopefully, hopefully I can get through all this in the, uh, the 20, 25 minutes, okay? So, um, there's, uh, within Microsoft itself, is, there's deep learning everywhere, from um, Skype to Cortana, the, the assistant, Bing, of course, that's a heavy, heavy machine learning uh, uh, engine, HoloLens, um, and even Xbox, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot of activity. Um, one other set of tools that, that are available are the cognitive uh, services. These are now uh, pre-built deep learning models that are available as RESTful APIs. Uh, so for vision, speech, language, um, some of them are customizable uh, using transfer learning. So everything here that you see, practically everything here, is built using uh, CNTK, the Cognitive Toolkit, right? Um, so so these are we have the, with these in production, right? Uh, <clears throat> so to give you an example of, of uh, what uh, what sort of power this the CNTK is driving right now. Uh, Currently, we have the, the record for um, speech recognition um, that is taking audio and transcribing to text. Uh, this using on the, on the switchboard data set, if you're familiar, with an error rate of 5.1%. Yeah, again, done with CNTK. So what is this? Um, it's an open source deep learning library available on GitHub. Um, it's under, it's uh, went well. It was pu made public in Jan of 2016. Has an MIT license, so uh, quite flexible there, right? Um, and uh, yeah, importantly, the internal what we use internally and what's available on GitHub are identical. That is, we actually use uh, the Git well a GitHub branch uh, for production purposes, right? So it's it's available to everyone, yeah. And uh, of course, support is uh, available for Linux, Windows, uh, and a lot of Docker activity recently, right? Okay. So, uh, in itself, it's a, it's a C++ library, um, leveraging CUDA. You know, it has high-level APIs in uh, higher-level APIs with C Sharp and Python. You know, uh, I would say Python again is probably the most uh, most commonly used uh, uh, API here. Um, it, has, it uh, allows you to uh, basically run your training jobs on multiple GPUs, multiple servers, the whole lot. Um, gives you, um, we'll I'll talk about the readers in a second. Uh, gives you a, a model compression, that is you can have uh, binaries uh, put together for the evaluation piece. And it supports Keras and Onks. Okay, so these are even higher level APIs where the libraries in the back end can be uh, uh, switched out, right? Okay, very quick um, introduction to neural networks. Um, they're nothing new, they've been around since the mid 50s. Yeah, so these were uh, basically modeled after uh, the neuron, uh, which we'll get to in a second, but, uh, um, but as a whole, it's, a bas it's still machine learning uh, where um, the tasks are typically for regression, classification, that sort of thing, right? And here's some attacks, tasks. So, so now these are really uh, full-blown tasks. Uh, so again, going from voice to text, that is uh, 
uh, transcription, right? Speech recognition. Um, going from video to um, uh, basically a, a sequence of, of actions, that is understanding what is going on in the video, right? Step by step. Um, text captioning, that is passing an image and having, having the model uh, generate a caption for you. And even uh, environmental states, uh, similar to, to what uh, actually is being done on the video side. So by the way, um, practically all of these are available within those REST APIs. Yeah, so out of the model. You don't, need to, you don't need to build your own CNTK models. You can just use one as a REST API. Okay. So neurons, of course, yeah, you're familiar. It's, um, so you have all these, uh, these connections. Some magic happens within the neuron itself. And there's some output. But uh, these are all uh, heavily, um, heavily interconnected. And uh, yeah, on, on, and we still don't know how they really work. But, uh, but nevertheless. The neural network is sort of designed after uh, this sort of uh, this sort of model, right? Uh, this sort of uh, structure. And ultimately, well, you have a, a set of uh, weights that are that are being um, learned, right? So the, the weights are how what the, the, are the strengths, if you will, of the connections with other neurons, and that's what ultimately is being trained. Okay. And there's always uh, some sort of uh, Activation function here, I've, I've put together a sigmoid, and that sort of wraps up the sum of the inputs and the weights and then pushes that out uh, to the next neuron. Yeah. So the whole might look like something like this. So at each, each step, um, each layer, you would have this sort of linear system. Yeah, just a set of weights. This is a matrix, typically. Um, matrix multiplied by a vector of your input plus some, um, some bias added. And then all that is wrapped into some sort of, uh, by some uh, activation function, like sigmoid, tan h, relu, that's what's quite, quite common. Now, notice that there's no, there's no fancy math here. There's matrix multiplication and addition, and then here it is relu. And relu, uh, for example, in the sigmoid or relu, it's a very simple, simple function. So uh, in reality, um, that's it. That's, that's most of the math there. At least going forward. I'll talk about going backwards in a second. Um, and this is where GPUs come in. Because GPUs are really good at doing matrix operations, right? This, whoops. Why would that, yeah. So this, all this activity is ideal for GPUs. Okay. Um, come, so, so talk about parameter sharing. The whole point of uh, uh, deep neural networks is that what's learned from, say, one part of the image can be used for another part of the image, right? So these, these parameters don't actually wind up being completely independent. Uh, so this is, an, this is an example of taking, say, an image and uh, perhaps uh, cl uh, using a classification or a detection of that flower, right? Similarly for, for speech, that's an audio file that could uh, potentially um, end up as a, as a string. Um, uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the transcription, right? Okay, so again, it's just that. That's your fully collected model on top. A bit of matrix multiplication, addition, and that's it. Um, and then you can get different flavors of it. So that up there is what's referred, referred to as a fully connected or dense layer, a dense neural network. Uh, we'll I'll show you some code and how, how simple it is to get one of these up and going. Um, then you can get into um, different other flavors of it. So convolution neural network would would be just a real modification of it, right? Um, which we'll, we'll go through a couple of those as, as well. There are recurrent networks, which have a feedback loop. So you're basically just taking the previous step and incorporating that within, uh, within your current state. Yeah. And of course, you just stack these layers one after another, and that's your deep network. Yeah. OK. OK, so some basics. Um, so CNTK really it's, it gives you all the building blocks to build whatever kind of uh, whatever flavor of deep learning model that uh, uh, that you like, right? So again, some of the really common ones these days are dense or fully connected, convolution for image processing, uh, recurrent uh, neural networks for any sort of sequence uh, data that you have coming, say whether it's uh, audio or string. Um, 
long short-term memory. That's another one. That's another fl flavor of recurrent networks. That's actually gained a lot of traction. Most uh, speech and um, translation models use uh, LSTM. Then you have uh, some of the new, uh, some some of the really sort of interesting ones: generative uh, adversarial networks, where you have basically two agents uh, battling it out and learning from each other. Right? You actually uh, typically provide them with very little data, if any. Um, say, for example, learning chess, you just um, give it the rules and have them play and learn. Right? So it's actually, uh, these, are, these are now GANs or data-less uh, training exercises and reinforcement learning, which we just uh, heard about a second ago. Yeah. And again, CNTK is production ready. We use in production. Our production code is on GitHub. Okay, so let's do a very simple two-layer model, right? This is a dense, um, fully connected feed-forward neural network, right? It's just these two. So I have two layers. So you have, a, so you have your input coming in X. You have some set of weights associated with for all your um, input, some bias. Then on the next layer, whatever the output is of this, of this uh, uh, activation, right? Right, whatever that's sigmoid or, or ReLU, um, is then used as input for the next layer. That's it. And in the end, there's some sort of what's well, referred to soft max, basically a, uh, a mapping of, of probabilities, um, just finally as to, to a number of classes, say, that you're looking at. Yeah? And in the process, there is a cost function. So this, this is where optimization comes in. Right? You have some sort of uh, cost that is uh, between cost being the, um, the difference, some sort of difference between the expected value, the labels that you have, and your predictions, right? So it'll actually go forward. So the, the, um, the flow would be to go through this process, half soft max, say, make some sort of prediction for you. Then you compare that prediction with the actual um, label for that specific sample, and there's, uh, there's an associated cost. Now, go back through the system. It will fiddle around with these weights. Um, I'm sure I'll go through. The, there's a little bit of calculus there um, until this, this cost is minimized. And that's it. Once it's uh, basically minimized, you, uh, you, you, you're done. And here it is in actual code. It's almost the same thing. This is the actual code. Yeah. This is a fully connected two-layer fully connected uh, neural network, OK? And what does it look like in a sort of graphical way? Again, you have your inputs coming in. So you have your uh, x is your features, y is your label. Those come in, they get multiplied by the weights. Uh, there's a bias addition. The activation is applied. Now that's your, basically, that's your h1, right? That's your h1 output. That gets uh, multiplied again by the weights, the same uh, all that continues until you get to your soft max, which is uh, basically your, uh, uh, your final sort of uh, mapper, if you will. And then your, your, your uh, labels go up all the way and are compared with the prediction mate. So this is the forward process. Okay. But then you have a, on the way back, you actually, have, you, you actually need a few things to do. So on the way back, there's a, there's a bit of calculus involved in optimizing these weights and biases, right? Uh, it's calculus one-on-one, -on -one really. So, so basically, if, if you, people say, you know, I don't want to get into the, the math of, of deep learning, uh, it's really basic calculus, basically in algebra. You're done. You're, you're, you're uh, an expert, really, OK? Now, even the, the calculus bit is even uh, done for you. There's automatic differentiation available. So um, yeah, so you just have to build this, this pipe. And you're done. You say go. You don't have to worry about anything else. Okay. And this data parallel training. Uh, so now this is a uh, um, ability to actually uh, run your models in parallel and have them basically uh, have different set of parameters that each diff uh, each server or GPU works on. And at the very end, uh, these uh, weights are shared with each other. Uh, we even have. Uh, some very efficient uh, optimizers. There's one called the uh, one-bit uh, stochastic uh, gradient descent, which now has an MIT license. This used to be proprietary, but uh, just uh, got opened up as of the 15th. 
Um, so it's a very, yeah, very efficient optimizers. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that. OK. So uh, you can think of a workflow as having three steps. Really, you have a, a reader, a data reader. You have some sort of network of, um, um, of, of basically your CPUs, GPUs, and, and all the connections uh, in between. And then at uh, the very end, you have a trainer, uh, which, has, which does the optimization, and out pops the model, right? So the reader itself, uh, with their bunch of them, depending on the, the actual data that you have, whether it's uh, text, video, audio, um, we have pre-built readers for those. And these are very efficient, parallelized readers, so they can actually take a, a chunk of data and move it specifically to an individual server. Um, it does all the, say, the randomization for you. It's, um, yeah, it's really, really makes it really simple to ingest your data and have it prepared for the, the training process, yeah. Um, so, okay, so here's, um, there's even higher level. So what you saw earlier with the sigmoid and all that, that was the very low level way of doing it. In reality, you would just write, say, dense. That's my now my dense layer. With the sigmoid of weights times the inputs plus the bias, all that is really dense. And you say, how many um, sort of neurons within this uh, layer? You know, 400, 200, 10, and that's it. That's your, that's actually pretty, pretty deep model, right? Um, and then for your, uh, for your actual optimization, again, it's just a little uh, one-liner, really. You say, OK, I want to use, say, cross-entropy, and at the end, uh, pop it out as a softmax. Yeah? So this is, um, so this is a fully connected one. Uh, let's do something a little bit more sophisticated, uh, specifically for, um, for image processing. This is now a convolution neural network. You have these, so you just say, yeah, I have a convolution layer. There's a max pooling, which is sort of a data reduction uh, stage, if you will, followed by another such layer, uh, ending it with a dense. And that's it. Yeah, that's, a that's a convolution neural network. Uh, let's do one with a recurrent one. This is, again, used for typically sequences, say whether it's text or audio or whatnot. Here again, you just, uh, again, you just say, oh, I want it to be LSTM with 300 nodes. Very, uh, very easy to get to, to pipe these, um, these layers together, right? And in terms of learners, um, there are all the, all the famous ones or the really popular ones that are available within CNTK. Uh, stochastic Great Descent, uh, Adam is another big one. And here we actually have one bit SGD. I should have put that here uh, as on, this, on this list. So in the end, for an end-to-end -end sort of uh, scenario, we'd look something like this. You have your model on top. Here is your, um, your, your, your loss function. Your optimization get, uh, is done there. And uh, that's it. You, uh, you just come in and choose your learner whether it's uh, your optimizer, whether it's SGD, Adam, or whatnot, yeah? OK. Good. Let's actually, I'll just show you how some real world models look. So that was all fun and dandy, very open, overly simplified uh, models. Uh, but uh, let's talk about a real thing. Uh, let's talk about, say, VGG. It's a very popular model that's, uh, that's been around uh, it's, uh, uh, since it's 2014. Um, Here's, you can actually, so by the way, all this, all this code that I'm about to share with you is available within the uh, CNTK uh, repository. These are under examples. So VGG16 looks like this. This is the whole thing. So what uh, I bet in 2014, those guys, they spent a lot of <laughs> lines of code uh, putting that model together. Here's, yeah, this is the full thing. Um, pretty straightforward. Once you, once, you, uh, once you have the, the sort of the architecture in mind, it just winds up being a lot of cut and pasting, really, right? These, all, these lines are all, sim all similar. OK. Uh, another famous um, uh, architecture out there, the residual network. This is actually by Microsoft. Um, and um, it's one of the top contenders were for um, image recognition. Yeah. So it's on the, say, the image net data set. So here's a little bit more sophisticated because there is this um, extra hop. There's a residual that's, that's 
used over and over uh, from the previous step, uh, for, or I should say, from earlier on within the architecture. Um, so here, ResNet is actually, here we're, we're, talking, we're talking about actually defining a few uh, blocks of layers and then sort of uh, calling these blocks back to each other, right? Yeah. So this is actually ResNet, uh, ResNet 50. Yeah. And Inception is another famous one. This is by the, by the folks at Google, uh, sometimes called Google Net. And uh, that one is, again, very straightforward. This is, uh, well, this is the building blocks of, of, of Inception. You actually just loop this over a few times, and that's it. You have it. OK. So let's talk about some benchmarks. So these, these are, by the way, this is all public. These, this came out on the 14th. Um, if you want to do a, either follow that link for the for the for for all the results, or just do a quick uh, web search for deep learning Rosetta Stone, you'll you'll get the hit. But uh, here we go. So, so these are some some numbers done. So these are, for example, this is for image recognition. So this the same task of building a VGG style 32-bit uh, convolution neural network on a specific data set. On here now we have two different types of GPUs. So are single GPUs, but two different types. You have the NVIDIA K80 and the NVIDIA P100. Okay. Now these are training times, so lower is better, right? And you can see, of course, uh, there's a there's a big uh, difference between the chips between the K80 and the P100. But as a whole, CNTK is doing pretty well, right? Uh, it's all it's it's basically well in this scenario it's actually uh, for the P100, it's faster than TensorFlow. But actually, MXNet and uh, PyTorch wind up being pretty, pretty quick. Yeah? That's so, that's so those are pretty impressive. Um, so feature extraction, this is now basically the, the uh, inference step. That is, you give it an image, and it will encode it into a vector of features, which you can then uh, actually pass on to some standard machine learning uh, algorithm for, for say, classification. Um, here, so, but this is still uh, scoring. So here, again, CNTK for, for the P100, it was uh, for, for scoring 1,000 images, it was around 1.6 seconds. TensorFlow was 1.8. Yeah? Uh, actually, for this, actually, this wound up, wound up being the fastest. CNTK wound up being the fastest. Yeah? Another example, this is now uh, recurrent neural networks, uh, basically uh, text comments that are mapped into a, a sentiment, um, so, so positive or negative, uh, whether depending on, on the tone of that sentence, right? And here again, um, CNTK for, for training, uh, model training times actually winds up be, uh, beating everyone. Yeah. So the question is why, you know, I often asked why would you, you know, this, there's all these other frameworks out there. Uh, uh, TensorFlow being a very, very uh, popular one. Uh, people ask, why is, uh, you know, why bother? And, um, and yeah, TensorFlow is great. Uh, in fact, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I personally use it. And for, but for certain tasks, certain toolkits might actually be more optimal. Well, it might be easier to actually model with, and in the end, might actually be faster, right? By the way, you see there's, there's this bit. So Keras, as I mentioned, uh, CNTK, Supports Keras as a higher level API. Uh, terrible numbers here. There's obviously some, some work that needs to be done on, on our side in uh, optimizing it. So ideally, these Keras numbers should be identical to the CNTK numbers. Ideally, right? Uh, um, so, so actually, um, so TensorFlow is doing a better job on uh, Keras integration. But yeah, so we do have some work, work to be done there. OK. So some release notes. Since, since a year ago, um, since uh, well, 2.0. So back in, back in May of last year, uh, we, we started supporting Keras. Well, um, there's now a, uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, uh, Halide, this is an open source uh, uh, image processing framework. So you can actually do uh, um, convolution layers using that toolkit as well, right? Uh, there's now a Java API available for model evaluation. This is alpha, by the way. So don't go and build 
everything in Java. Stick with stick with Python and C++ and C Sharp for now. Yeah. Um, some um, some other releases of Kudo 6.60 uh, integration, and uh, more importantly, uh, in version 2.2 uh, there was support for NVIDIA's Nickel. This is a um, basically an MPI-like uh, parallel um, communication parallelized uh, communication protocol. Yeah. So 2.3. Um, so Onyx has been on the on uh, supported for a while. We got actually uh, much a uh, lot of activity on the Onyx side. So this is again Onyx uh, and Keras, as I mentioned, these are even higher level APIs where you can readily switch the back end between different frameworks. So you can jump between, say, Py uh, Theano and uh, TensorFlow and CNTK. Yeah. So um, yeah, so that, that's, that came in. Uh, we, we started supporting Nickel 2. Um, this is the next generation of uh, um, uh, communication. Uh, library, right? Um, early this year, uh, we added um, support for the Volta GPUs. This is uh, NVIDIA's uh, basically uh, latest and greatest chipset and, uh, and floating point, 16-bit uh, uh, floating point operations. You know, whoops, 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 whoops. And just as of the 15th of this month, <coughs> the few good, some, some pretty uh, interesting uh, updates there. They're now using um, this integration with Intel's um, uh, math library for parallelized, uh, for even further parallelized computing. This one bit that that stochastic gradient descent uh, algorithm that I mentioned, uh, learner that I mentioned, that's now been open sourced. It has an MIT license that used to be proprietary. It was actually just kept internally for our own purposes. Now it's available to everyone. And have been uh, sort of some uh, further distributed for uh, training for multiple learners. So, so that's specific for for generative uh, adversarial networks. Okay. Some quick resources for you to to catch up on. So, by the way, check out cntgit.ai. There's a whole model gallery there. So um, I just uh, I took a screen, screenshot this morning. So as of today, Flappy Bird with Keras was was published. This is reinforcement learning using Python, for example. Yeah, um, so you don't have, so you can get started very quickly. By the way, this is just a little gallery which allows you to filter and search through uh, the different models available. But ultimately, when you click on one of these, it'll send you to GitHub. Yeah. Okay, so that's the gallery available. Again, you can just just start with uh, your favorite programming language and then and then go from there. Okay. Uh, there are a ton of tutorials on GitHub itself within the CNTK repository. Uh, if you want to get started uh, for, for free, basically, they are, um, you have CNTK available in, on Azure notebooks, the, the Jupyter notebooks that are, you just, just log in to start using. Yeah. Um, so a bunch of tutorials within the uh, Azure Jupyter notebooks. We have a full uh, four-week MOOC on edX. So yeah, so it's a proper proper MOOC. Um, you have a you know, ton of people coming in, starting a, starting the course together. Um, and uh, and what's great is you actually have uh, Microsoft researchers teaching this course. Yeah. Um, so yeah, give give that a try. Um, and in terms of actually running, um, so now let's talk about actually doing some serious work. Uh, you ultimately want to use. Uh, GPUs for big tasks because they're ultimately for, for these sort of workloads that can be 30 times of the 30 times faster than uh, CPUs. So on Azure we do have GPU powered virtual machines with uh, but the Nvidia supporting the Nvidia K80, P40, P100, and V100. That's the Volta uh, of chipsets. Well, uh, another cool thing within uh, Azure. So if you go there, if you go to the marketplace. Uh, you'll see, you'll, you'll quickly find this uh, uh, data science virtual machine. Uh, this, this one specific is uh, for, uh, for deep learning. So these, these uh, the data science VMs are basically um, VM images with all the popular data science tools, all the software, pre-installed, pre-configured. Yeah? So there uh, you just, uh, uh, by the way, all the software is free, even some of the proprietary ones that Microsoft has thrown in. Yeah, but most of this is, is, uh, is 
Um, most of the software that's on there is open source. So here with this deep learning new, uh, uh, toolkit, you get actually MXNet, CNTK, TensorFlow, Keras, a uh, ton of stuff actually. Yeah. So all the software is free and in terms of costing, it's just the, the, the VM size that you go after, right? Then there's Azure Batch AI. This is now, so, so going back, this is for, so this is really for scaling up, right? Uh, you can just go with bigger, bigger VMs with uh, more and more GPUs, right? You can uh, ultimately hit four GPUs. So that's scaling up. You take this approach. Scaling out, now you have multiple servers doing your uh, model training. You would use a tool such as uh, Azure Batch AI. So this is um, um, basically it's your um, framework for distributing your uh, learning job across a set of uh, virtual machines. It's all automated. Um, it's similar to say um, um, Google's uh, Cloud ML engine, but um, unlike that engine, you're not limited to TensorFlow. Here you can again come use your favorite open source. Uh, uh, deep learning framework, CNTK, TensorFlow, Chainer, Cafe, Torch, uh, they're, all, they're all ready to go. The recipe's out there for, for uh, running your jobs. Yeah. And, um, wow, I actually did pretty good on time. And that's it. Uh, please find me on GitHub, Twitter, and LinkedIn under the Ben Sedegi handle. Uh, questions, please. Okay. Thank you much. What is your view on this uh, MKL from Intel? Because uh, I've attended some presentation when they, they tried to push uh, machines like you know, their own libraries, they tried to do this, but there's already CPU, GPU aspect that mm. the GPU is usually faster, so mm. I, I don't get the point to actually introducing, I mean, it is more like Intel aspect, but uh, what, what do you feel on this, especially when you do so, Correct. So, for honestly, for matrix multiplication, nothing's going to be, beat uh, you know custom custom hardware. So A6 or or, or if you will um, or GPUs, right? Um, but um, the Intel math library, that's it's very it's quite generic. It has a ton of math functions paralyzed. So if you want to do stuff that really can't be done with just simple matrix multiplication, but you still want to paralyze, the that, that library is pretty good. Um, and yeah, Intel, Intel themselves, um, they are pushing hard within the, um, uh, the deep learning space. They have this one, uh, one library called the uh, big DL, right? Uh, uh, that's open source and it's, uh, it's basically designed to run on CPUs, right? And, uh, um, I have seen some numbers where a very finely tuned configuration has, you know, does, does give you some really nice, uh, performance numbers in terms of training. So yeah, it's a battle right now. Um, Intel's yeah, they're, 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 they do see themselves as the underdog in this space. Uh, so they're, they're, they are making uh, some efforts to come back in. Intel buying Altera and, and like uh, having uh, FPGAs maybe later. This might compete also in the, in the future where, where we get maybe ASIC from Intel. Yeah. Like try to beat up the GPU. Cor cor correct, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That they might, yeah, they do, they do need to uh, step up their game as the expression goes, yeah. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.